for additional responses or additional questions. And once again, I get to begin. Um, I, uh, let's see. Uh, during the COVID pandemic, and, and you addressed this in your uh, earlier comments, Ms. Bernard, Congress recognized the risk of impending water shutoffs and growing debt nationwide and provided more than a billion dollars to cover water debt and restore connections for low-income households. Now, to do this, Congress created the Low-Income Household Water Assistance Program. For folks watching at home, when you hear LIWAP, that's what we're talking about the first federal program to assist low-income families with their water bills. Now, that program expires this year, as does the one-time funding provided by Congress to cover water debt, covers what reconnection services, covers late fees, and reduces water rates. Now, I've advocated for additional funding and an extension of the program as a bridge to a permanent water assistance program that... Uh, uh, several of you have uh, suggested. Uh, so, Ms. Bernard, I was glad to hear that Santa Cruz participated in LIWAP to help your customers access one-time payments and temporary support. What will happen if LIWAP expires and we don't replace it with a permanent water assistance program? So, that's a great question. Thank you for that. Uh, one of the things that we're concerned about is that we won't have the one-time funding to help particular, you know, people who get in arrears, which uh, if you're low income and you're making this trade off every month, it's pretty easy when, even once you get the help of uh, having your slate clean to find yourself back there again. Um, but I think that it, we would find ourselves in a situation where uh, shutting people off for non-payment or giving people payment arrangements is something that would become much more frequent. One of the things we've done about just in the last couple of weeks since the COVID era, you know, um, prohibition against disconnections has occurred, uh, it's actually expired in California, is we have uh, had just 50 payment arrangements were set up in just in the last couple of weeks. The average amount of those payment arrangements is $198 a month, which is for 12 months. So that's going to be a really big burden for some uh, one, one who's already struggling to be able to uh, pay in order to clear that arrearage. So I think the bottom line for us is that we would have a lot more people facing shutoffs for non-payment. Uh, Mr. Jones, uh, brief response, if, if you would. Do you think it makes sense that we have a permanent energy assistance program in LIHEAP? I referenced that earlier, mm. but not a permanent program for water? Absolutely not. We need support for water assistance. Okay. Anybody disagree with that? All right. Thank you. Uh, let the record reflect. All witnesses have nodded no. Uh, <laughs> Uh, one additional question, and I'll uh, recognize Senator Lemus again. Uh, Mr. Jones and Mr. Pepper, both of you in your written testimonies discussed the challenges that small rural or disadvantaged water systems face to develop solutions and create needed projects to deliver and to treat water. And that's just to develop the pipeline of projects that could potentially receive federal or state funding. You discuss issues related to economies of scale and the lack of large ratepayer base to spread costs. Could you each expand on the challenges that communities face in accessing infrastructure dollars and what are some of the solutions uh, that you've seen, particularly if it sheds light on what Congress can do uh, to help in this uh, regard? Uh, thank you. Uh, so some of the challenges we're facing, like I said, a lot of primes projects need a lot more technical assistance in order to not only understand what a long-term solution is that works for the community, but also uh, gets community support and buy-in, which is absolutely critical. And I think the famous story in California is about Lanier, California. That's a community that faced arsenic in their drinking water, and they were uh, funded a treatment project for that community. But unfortunately, because it wasn't right-sized for the community, that project was shuttered when the community couldn't afford operations and maintenance costs. One thing we're doing in California is looking at starting to fund operations and maintenance for certain projects to actually make it so that solutions are affordable for communities. And so I think going forward, that's gotta be part of the conversation to figure out how uh, making sure that communities are able to run systems is, is part of the solution. Just for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in Wyoming, I know we have a myriad of funding programs in addition to 
the federal programs, the, the state revolving funds. I, I think the state revolving funds were a great uh, uh, addition to the funding mechanisms, uh, giving the states the opportunity to design their own rules and regs around the uh, SRFs is, is critical. Uh, every state is a little different, which does make it a little tough to go from state to state to state, which makes in-state uh, uh, technical assistance so critical. Uh, but I do think that, that uh, uh, some of the timelines that come with that funding uh, need to be addressed and need to be looked at a little bit differently. Uh, like I said, the, the SRF, the infrastructure bill, uh, some of those funding sources and, and timelines are just unrealistic given the supply chain issues, given the uh, technical abilities of, of having enough engineers and contractors who can do the work, uh, and then also having the workforce uh, that can then maintain it after everything's all done. Uh, I know the, uh, my second round five minutes are up, but if you'll indulge me, I have one specific follow-up question uh, for Mr. Jones. Uh, and I believe it's a timely one. Uh, as we speak, I believe the uh, House of Representatives is taking up this uh, debt limit deal. Mm -hmm. Now the debt limit deal uh, currently under consideration rescinds unobligated LIWAP funds from the American Rescue Plan. Now funds to states and tribes have all been obligated, that's the good news, but this will impact the HHS budget for staff time and for expenses. So how will this impact, a uh, question for Mr. Jones, the ability of communities to implement their LIWAP funds if HHS has decreased capacity for staffing? I think it's certainly gonna pose a challenge. Um, in California, there's been a lot of conversation between uh, our state agencies that are implementing the program and HHS, and a lot of assistance coming from HHS on how to better structure California's pro program. And unfortunately, California hasn't been as successful as other states in getting funding out the door. Um, and, and so certainly making sure that, that HHS has the ability to support states in getting resources to families is gonna be absolutely critical. I think secondly, there's a lot of important work being done on reporting and getting data out there so that we can understand who is doing what work and why. And as I look to think about how California could do a better job, I see you know, states like uh, you know, Pennsylvania, Michigan doing fantastic, and that makes me want to learn about them. And, and so I worry that if we're not going to have that ability to, to data share and staff to help, that uh, we're not going to be able to improve upon the program and the model of delivery and going forward. Thank you. I just want to underscore that because I think part of the the dynamic we're facing here for, for small, for rural, uh, for resource limited water utilities and communities, uh, sometimes reliance on the federal government for some of that technical assistance and support is part of getting to a solution. So if that's limited on the federal side, separate and apart from a dollar, a grant, or a, a, a favorable loan, uh, this uh, is, is hurting more than it's helping. Senator Lamar.